The way I got involved in this business is, uh, is kind of indirectly. I used to be a salesman uh, working for NBC. That was back in the 50s. Uh, and uh, I was selling syndicated junk to the local television stations. Things like Douglas Fairbanks Presents, and uh, uh, The Visitor, and <laughs> reruns of old Hopalong Cassidy movies, that type of stuff. Uh, and th we started to make our own pilots in those days. And, uh, and they, were, they were awful. The stuff would come in from, would fly in from the coast on its own. It was so bad. I mean, now you talk about turkeys. These things were incredible. And what I would do is that the pilots were so awful, we had a 16 millimeter, it was everything on 16 millimeter film in those days. We had 16 millimeter projector in, the, in, in, our, in our room, in the conference room, and a little editing block uh, in case the film broke, we could splice it together. I would go in and actually cut out entire sequences out of these terrible pilot films. So I always used to say things like, if I couldn't do it better than these dumb bastards, I'd give up the business, you know, they're just awful. So I always had the feeling that it, you know, I had some kind of creative bent. And then eventually I left there and I went to work for MCA because I wanted to move up into the big time and I got involved in selling network television. And uh, I came up with a uh, with an idea for a golf show. They represented Arnold Palmer and Gary Flair when those guys were ruling the golf world. And I, I came up with a little show called Challenge Golf, put them together, and they took on all comers. And I sold it to Lincoln Mercury, I remember. And then I went into Sonny Werblin, who was running MCA at the time, along with Lou Wasserman. And I said, you promised me a raise when I came in here. I haven't seen a dime since I've gotten into the organization. And I need money because I didn't pay my bills anymore. And he said, oh, well, you know, it's not in the budget right now. And I was asking him for like $10,000. He was paying me nothing. And uh, we got into a big dispute. And I told him to take the job and stick it. And he asked me when I was leaving. And I said, today. And I went out, which is terrible. You know, you go out on your own and you're alone in New York. Uh, but I had another idea for another golf show. And that show, that show went on the air. And... I got myself a little office. It was a, it was a penthouse office, I called it. It was a storage room at the top of 119 West 57th Street. You had to walk out onto an outside fire escape to get up to a fire door to get into the room. The room was filled with junk. I was paying virtually nothing for it. The owner liked me. He let me have the space, and I figured I'd try to sell my golf show. To make a long story short, it took a year. I had 300 bucks left in the checking account. I couldn't make the next poor mortgage payment on a house. I had $10,000 in unpaid bills in a big cardboard box. I was only paying people who had turned things off. Nobody else got the money. And I sold it. I pulled it out. It's a great story. I pulled it out the last second. It was called the CBS Golf Classic. It stayed on the air for 10 years, and I suddenly had my own company. I produced that show for the first four years. CBS and I owned it 50-50, and then I went on to do other things, even though the money was still coming in. And dark shadows happened. I came up with a crazy idea, dreamt some wacky thing, went in and sold it, became dark shadows. That went on the air. And once dark shadows get on the air, I got more involved creatively. Uh, I got involved with all the storylines. I was doing all the writing and writing with the other writers. and. Uh, running the whole show. I was telling directors what to do, and it's going, it's getting crazier and crazier, and then one day I just decided, I gotta cut out the middleman, I'm gonna become the director, and I, I'll do the whole thing myself. And that's the way it happened.